Today we're going to be covering chair pose or utkatasana. This pose is amazing because it stimulates our abdominal organs, our diaphragm, our heart. It also works to strengthen our hips, thighs, muscles around our ankles, and also works to combat flat feet. I love this posture, however, I oftentimes find that people have a challenge getting into this pose because they have ankle, knee, hip, abdominal, or even shoulder and neck problems. So come along for the ride while we dive into some modifications to help you successfully get into chair pose. So let's go ahead and go with the very easiest version or modification of chair pose. Now, you might laugh and think, man, Laura, this is so silly. But here's the bottom line. Not all of us can deep dip into this deep chair pose. And just because I'm sitting on a chair doesn't mean that I need to be doing this in a passive manner. When I am doing chair yoga, or if I choose to use a chair as a modification, what I can do is I can sit towards the front of my chair, again, grounding my feet into my support surface, almost as if I'm going to spring to my feet, firming my thighs. I'm pulling my abdomen in, lengthening my tailbone. So what that means is I'm not letting my back flare out, but I'm kind of tucking my tailbone underneath. I'm maintaining my ribs and core canister nice and tight. And then from here, I can choose to do whatever I want with my arms. We're going to be covering lower body modifications first and then move to upper body modifications. So having a chair close by is certainly an easy and simple modification so that you can still practice chair pose without having to suffer any aches or pains along the way. Moving to the next modification, we can go ahead and do something as simple as changing our foot position. So when we are getting into the traditional position for chair pose, they tend to ask you to put your toes, big toes together, and they ask you to separate your heels just a little bit. Sometimes this position, whether it is because of our body habitus or maybe because of how our joints are lined up, does not allow us to sink into this chair pose. Simply separating the feet is an easy way to allow yourself to get into chair pose without any discomfort. I oftentimes like to layer onto this modification a yoga block. The reason why I like to add on to a yoga block in here is by placing this block in between my knees, I have to squeeze this yoga block together very firmly. In doing this, I can activate my feet, lifting my arches, squeezing my knees in, engaging my thighs, lifting my pelvic floor, tightening my tummy, setting everything up, having this nice long spine. With this foundation set up, then I can sink back into chair pose, not worrying about the depth that I'm getting to, but also sinking in with the knowledge that I have all of the muscles engaged correctly that are supposed to be helping to support these joints, help to strengthen, which is one of the reasons of this posture. So I love adding a block in. Now, the next modification, again, a modification that I will oftentimes utilize is a folded towel or not towel, uh, a folded blanket, or I will fold my yoga mat. 
what I am doing by folding my yoga mat or blanket is I'm going to place my heels on top of this blanket. In doing so, by lifting the heels, I am taking my ankles out as an issue um, for what will uh, inhibit my range of motion in dropping down. So oftentimes when we lack the ability to squat, the reason we lack that ability or the reason why our knees shift forward and we get pain in our knees is because our ankles don't have good range of motion. So by elevating our ankles on a um, blanket, we can then sink into our squat with better depth. So if I show this for the other camera angle that I have over here, I can go ahead, simply elevate my heels slightly. I can still lean backwards, putting the weight on my heels, which is the appropriate setup for chair pose. And then I can sink down still maintaining that weight backwards. I can still lift and spread my toes so those are not gripping in the ground. Again, I am engaging my core and keeping a nice long line of energy and then rising up. So again, of all of the modifications, this is one of my favorite and one that I use pretty much every time I do chair pose. The last modification that I will show you for your lower extremities and probably one of the biggest unsung heroes is right behind me and that is the wall. So this is an amazing, amazing tool for modification. The reason why is when we go into chair pose, oftentimes we will experience knee pain. And that can be because our knees are going in front of our toes. That causes some shearing at our knee joint. So by going against the wall, I can sink in and I can work on getting my thighs closer to parallel without creating any undue stress through that knee joint. So I can work on that strength. I can work on stimulating the abdominal organs, the diaphragm, and the heart without causing any undue stress through other joints. So that covers our modifications for the lower extremities. I'm gonna go ahead and now cover the modifications for our upper extremities. Modifications for the upper extremities for chair pose can be something where you just simply place your hands in front of your heart. Another modification could be placing your hands out in front of you so that your arms are running in parallel with the ground. Many times what you're hearing when you're getting a cue from the yoga teacher, whether it's online or in class, is that they are trying to have you get your arms straight up above your head. What oftentimes happens with that when we're shifting for that straight up above our head is that we are pinching our shoulder and that's where we can get in trouble because as we sink into the squat, naturally my rib cage and my whole chest comes forward. And so I see students wanting to maintain this upright position even though they're coming forward like this and they keep straining for that upright and they lose this kind of neutral spine that we're going for and they arch through their back. So very simply, if you have any shoulder or neck discomfort, do prayer hands, hands straight out in front of you. I always call it cactus arms. Another simple um, option is instead of straight up like this or rigid, like you're holding a basketball or a beach ball in your arms, 
And then lastly, and probably one of the most like least things that people look at is their neck. So again, when we're sinking into chair pose, people will be looking like this. I always want you to gently tuck that chin and move your chin backwards like you're almost tucking it to your heart. Not that you are looking down to the ground, but you're just gently pulling it in and your gaze is about mm, six to 12 inches in front of you. So those are your simple and easy modifications for chair pose. Please take some time to explore this position on your own so that when you dive into it in class, whether it's online or in person, you feel confident seeking the modifications and the tools that you need for success. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for all of the up-to-date information, and share with your friends.